What can DT do with Tom Brady throwing passes to him this year? Are the Titans tight ends must avoids in 2019 drafts? And who are the rookies you need to know about for your dynasty leagues? Plus 2018 FFPC 1250 Dynasty League number 16 champion Matt Ryan pops in the chat about Le'Veon Bell, Tyreek Hill, and a trio of rookie tight ends. Dave Gruzek is here. We've got a great show for you. I'm Eric Balkman. Stick around. Your high stakes fantasy football hour starts now. Your hands, everybody. You got what it takes. It's about your reps and I'm on the mic and premieres on the break. Broadcast live and heard around the world, you are now listening to the most entertaining hour of radio on the planet. It's the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com with your hosts, Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. The High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour is your home for football analysis from the best fantasy players in the world. And now, because no one else was available, here are Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak. With the master rhymer, that's the lead behind the video rapper. You know the top rhymer, tapper, tapper, tapper. Down goes another rapper, on to another one. Punch up the data, faster. Thanks a lot, Rob. Greetings and salutations to all of you Balkaholics and Gerzak and addicts. Welcome to the latest episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by MyFFPC.com. I am, of course, your slightly above average host, Eric Balkman, and my co-host is the patron saint of fantasy football, the Dizzle, Dave Gerzak. And Dave, you have a question for uh, Aunt Jemima and Wasp Guy. We're going to lead off at the top of the show right now. Now, Blog Talk Radio, once again, in their w- infinite wisdom, has quote-unquote improved the chat interface tonight. You and I cannot figure out how to type. We have, yeah, we cannot figure out how to post a message in there. Right. But Zeb and Wasp Guy... No, no, not, not, uh, not John Terry. Terry. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my daughter is taking AP computer science principles. Get her down life. here. Let's figure this and out. She's coding uh, her project where it, she has a dragon talking to uh, figure out your uh, Chinese zodiac and your normal zodiac symbol. Yeah. And it looks better than this. This looks like crap. Yeah, it's not good. And I don't even know how it works. Yeah, I don't either. I, I can't figure where it out. Where do you type? I, I think you got to type you at the bottom. You have to type. No, you don't have to talk. you got to type at the bottom because I'm getting that, that little icon that says I should be able to type. But it's, it's not... Here, come over here and look at this. At the bottom of the screen, it says type a message, according to John Terry. See, now, doesn't this look like I should be able to type here? Yeah, I, yeah it doesn't say that. Yeah. It doesn't say that for us. Uh, yeah, it does not say type, type a message for us. Oh, get down here. Not. I wonder Re-code if we could, this. I wonder if we could, oh, no, no, that's not going to work either. I, we might have to create some blog talk radio burner accounts. <laughs> to, log, to log into this. Yeah. Uh, coming up on tonight's show, ladies and gentlemen, we'll try to figure out the chat. We'll also discuss the Texans running backs. What the heck is actually going on with the Raiders scouting staff? My God. And Matt Ryan is going to join us for uh, uh, in just a little bit to talk about how we took down the FFPC 1250 Dynasty League number 16 last season. Uh, shout out to uh, the chat room right now that is trying to teach us how to chat. Uh, Unbelievable. Feel free to post questions you guys might have in there. If you want to connect with us on Twitter, at HSFFR, at Eric Balkman, at David Gerzak. It's Facebook.com slash HSFFR and the number to call in, 347-426-3682, 347-GAME OVA. fantasy football at gmail.com is the email address that our producer and mutual friend Rob uh, and our audio engineer Bryce are monitoring tonight, and they'll get those questions to us coming up in the fantasy feedback segment later on in the show. I want to let everybody know that if you have not been paying attention, the last pre-NFL draft dynasty startup is forming now at myffpc.com. At last check, there were seven openings in that, and that is a live dynasty startup that goes on a week from – actually, no, it goes on this Wednesday, so the, the night before the draft, so you can get in on that. Plenty of other post-NFL draft. Uh, Dynasty startups going on. The early bird for the main event is going on right now. Save $100 off your first team as long as you register before May 31st. And $350 off each additional team, the biggest we've ever offered. Football Guys Players Championship early bird going on. Get in before June 30th and draft your team before July 15th. You'll get a free $35 credit. We'll do that up to three times for you. Best ball, super flex, and double ups. Always available at myffpc.com. Let's yada, get, yada, yada. Yeah. Uh, so you have been gone for a while, Dave. Is this? I know the chat's new. It's new to me tonight. Yeah, I finished my 28 days rehab one break. Oh, good. I'm thrilled. <laughs> thrilled to hear. 
Now, the wine is good. now how many of the restraining wine. orders have been lifted? I <laughs> yeah, think I that's, that's the real question. 500 feet of my family again. They, yeah. they, we worked it out. Good. So. Well, that's, Everything all, is really good. All's well that ends well yeah. uh, is the way I look at it. I'm, I'm glad to see that. And so you're celebrating uh, getting out of rehab with a nice glass of wine. Yeah, the, what is that, uh, I think that's the celebratory uh, way to do it uh, as well. <laughs> sure. All right, so let's uh, let's introduce tonight's guest, uh, bring him in now. He's been very patient. He started doing high stakes with the FFPC uh, back in 2016, just getting his feet wet with some smaller money leagues to see what we were all about, Dave. He got into doing bigger money leagues and the dynasty leagues in 2017. That was the year he won a Football Guys Players Championship League. And last year, the re- returning champion now, uh, is he last year he won the 1250 number 16 uh, dynasty league? Please welcome in to the high stakes fantasy football hour, Mr. Matt Ryan. Matt, welcome in uh, to the show and thanks for uh, joining us this week. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. So, so uh, the the 1250 dynasty league, I did not pay attention to how this finished. Was it was it a sweat that last week, or were you kind of in control heading into week 16? You know, I was kind of in control the uh, the whole year. What you'll uh, <laughs> what you see if you look at back at the whole thing that inaugural year, 2017, I uh, I had David Johnson early, and we all know how that panned out, right? Um, got hurt that what week one or two, and it was a real down year. So I made some <laughs> some pretty big trades that off season, and I'm getting uh, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown, Michael Thomas. So uh, yeah, last year turned around, and I was kind of in control of the uh, the whole year there. Good for you, man. Good, good, shrewd moves there. Now we'll, we'll get into more of that on, on your fantasy team. Before we, right. we do that, can you tell us a little bit when you're not uh, dominating that 1250 number 16 all season long? Can you tell us what you do for a living? Yeah, I am in uh, in medical sales, so it kind of fits the bill of the whole, you know, trying to deal, trying to trade that whole mantra that I got going now. Uh, the, the medical sales, Dave. Any questions about medical sales? I, I know uh, you, you, you. I don't have good ones for that. Okay, well, that's interesting that you don't. <laughs> Normally, no any kind does. of sales or do you sell do you sell medicine or do you sell supplies or what do you sell or you don't have to be specific. I sell, yeah, devices, oh, devices. Yep. I see. Capital equipment. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know that as well. You know. Okay. I can't, that's, I can't, hey, listen, I can't make the drug dealer type jokes and all that stuff. You know, so it doesn't work as well. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Dave. You may you not know. Sell bombs or anything. Uh, yeah, so well, that, let's say, we're getting into the gray areas here, <laughs> so I, I think we should move on from that. Now, you may not know a whole lot of medical sales. What you do know is Le'Veon Bell, and I think you have a question for Matt about that. Yeah. So you, obviously, uh, you, you traded with Leonard Fournette for Le'Veon Bell, and so you really didn't get much use out of him or any use. But what kind of season do you think? Well, are you really looking forward to Le'Veon Bell now that he's had that off season? And by the way, do you also buy? Some people are saying, "Oh, Le'Veon Bell got fat in the off season." Do you think that that's true? I, I think he kind of stayed in shape, but I was wondering what, what your take is on. No, he's, he's. I think he's had to have stayed in shape, right? He's he's getting a big contract. He knew he was going to get a big contract, so he's got to come. He's got to come ready for that. But no, I made that like you said. I made that deal for Fournette. I was uh, and Eric, like you had mentioned, I was kind of in control with the 16, so I thought I could make that initial trade and, and still get away with it. Um, but you know, I'm expecting you know Bell to have at least a solid year, right? Maybe not what he's had with the Steelers, but uh, you know, I think with Gase coming over, he knows how to use them, uh, which he showed at times with Miami and, and Kenyon Drake, right? Kenyon Drake had a uh, over a thousand all-purpose yards last year, and that's even with splitting carries with uh, with Frank Gore. So, you know, I'm expecting to uh, Le'Veon to you know to come back and the year off. Maybe you know, maybe he's a little bit fresher, right? It's, it seems like FFPC owners have have warmed up to us. I know this is you know Dynasty is going to be the dominant topic tonight. But as far as redraft leagues go, I'm going to mention the ADP from time to time during the program tonight, uh, as I am wont to do. Uh, Le'Veon Bell 107 is where he is currently going right now. The sixth running back off the board behind Barkley, Elliott, McCaffrey, uh, Kamara, and uh, Todd Gurley. So he is going at the 107. And it seems like we were talking about Le'Veon Bell like last month. Uh, he was going t- towards the end of the first round, early second round. So he has climbed a little bit, uh, and, and I think people are starting to warm up to Le'Veon Bell, no question. The guy who replaced him, Matt, in Pittsburgh, James Conner, is on your uh, squad here, this uh, 1250 number 16 title winning team. How high on the fluke scale was his performance last year? And I'm going to rate this as zero, being not a fluke at all, totally legit, and 10 being 
He'll never even the fluke scale. The fluke scale. I like that. Ten being he'll never sniff those kinds of stats ever again. Where does Connor's 2018 performance rate on that? You know, I I would put it honestly between a zero and a, and a two, right? I mean, last year he came in, he wasn't really sure was Le'Veon coming back, was he not coming back? What's the deal? Kind of that uncertainty, right? He goes into this year knowing that he's the man. Um, he's obviously dealing with those, you know, the injuries which he's had throughout college, and with, you know, obviously the big one, and then, you know, the ankle injury towards the end of last year. But I mean, what they had a Steelers put out a Twitter poll over what the last week or something like that, asking how many touchdowns we'll have, and Le'Veon replied with 17. So I think with the way the Steelers <laughs> are, you know, the way Le'Veon Bell and, and AB left, right, it's got uh, it's got Big Ben and those guys pissed off. So I think they're going to come back and try to prove a point this year that they can win without him and still put up those numbers. Yeah, I know the offensive line is is their big James Conner fans. Obviously, Big Ben, uh, we we you know he was effusive in his praise last year for Connor. And, and like you mentioned, no Brown. We're going to see a lot of Juju Smith-Schuster. We're going to see the tight ends featured, and we'll see what happens between uh, Monte Doncrief and uh, James Washington there as well, Dave. Uh, in, interesting uh, to look at with James Conner, and he's the type of guy who is still being drafted in the first round of FFPC drafts. Granted, it's a 112 right now for his ADP, but he is a first-round pick. Uh, you look inquisitive. Do you have a question? Uh, not necessarily no, you're, about James are you breaking Conner. down this Connor or Bell thing, or what? What is your what? It, no, I'm, I'm kind of. I'm looking forward to the next discussion. Actually. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I, no, I mean, I actually agree. With, I agree with Connor. I, I agree that Connor's going to have a really nice year. Yeah. I think that Jalen Samuels is a nice cheap backup too, and he's proved that he can be good when needed. We'll have to see what they do in the draft. I mean, obviously, if they take a running back on day two, this this kind of flips it a little bit. I don't think they will. I do think they add somebody on day three. I don't think that's that bold of a prediction. And, yeah, and the running backs this class not. I don't like no bueno. Not, not no hard. bueno at all. So, all right, sticking a little bit with the Steelers theme, you have Antonio Brown on your team, it sounds like, and even if you don't, I'm going to ask you about yep. him anyway. Perfect. He moves, moves out to Oakland. He's catching passes from Derek L'Oreal. And, by the way, the slogan is, L'Oreal. Because you're worth it. Derek, because <laughs> oh, you're worth it. Oh, is this Derek, because you're worth no, it, L'Oreal. I have a question. Car. What? So he, he advertises eyeshadow. So, so, so my question is, what? when when did he leave? When when did the Maybelline um, the guy uh, expired? Sponsor, oh, that is expired. Okay, so then he went to L'Oreal. Yeah, so he does one year. He's smart about that. Does one year deals. With Many three. athletes leave Adidas for Nike. <laughs> Derek Carr leaving Maybelline for L'Oreal. He's worth it. Uh, have you been shopping <laughs> Antonio Brown at all on your Title One squad to see what you get for him? Uh, regardless. Or as some people would say, irregardless of whether irregardless. Going bad. <laughs> irregardless. Yeah. So um, <laughs> AB another he's dude. He's bad grammar. Like, you know, it, it's <laughs> he's another dude I picked up in a trade late in the summer last season. But uh, no, early on, you know, right after he left to Oakland, I got several low ball offers for him. Um, nothing that made me even you know think about twice about pulling the trigger or doing anything with which I was com- I was completely completely fine with. Um, I know several girls, several guys that got rattled and jumped the gun on dealing them. I want to see how things shook out with, uh, you know, the money that Oakland had in free agency and with their three first-round picks, obviously, right? And you saw what they did with that. They invested heavy in the old line. They got Isaiah Crowell. Um, and then, you know, with every mock draft I've seen is Josh Jacobs, you know, with one of those picks, right? And I think the, uh, the addition that isn't getting enough attention is Tyrell Williams. I know, Eric, you guys have talked about this in the past, but um, – I mean, that's, that's a big under-the-radar signing that I really think is going to take a lot of attention off of AB. But, uh, I mean, that, so coming back full cir- circle to your question, I want to see how things played out. So, you know, those I wasn't really jumping the gun on any of those those low offers that I did get. Well, plus you have a championship-level team. And Antonio Brown, to me, he's still in, he's definitely in that window of you can keep him for the next two, three years. Or even for like a Heinz Ward or Fitzgerald, where you just keep an all-pro caliber player for the rest of his career and say, screw it. Because he's never going to, because he continues to age. He's a bag holder. He's never going to be worth what he's worth. You know, no one's going to pay what he's really worth to you as a championship caliber team. So you can just keep him for right. five more years, kick ass, and then be like, oh, well, he retired. That was awesome. Thanks for all the money. Sometimes I think that's, exactly. you know, we always talk about finding the value, whether it's redraft or dynasty or whatever. Sometimes I think, and it doesn't apply to all veterans, but I think when, once, you know, certain veterans hit their late 20s, their early 30s, the value in is keeping them on your roster, not flipping them for picks, not flipping them for something else. What do you uh, think about that, Matt? You agree? 
Yeah, no, I, I so like I said, I'm big into the trading, and, you know, I'm into the proven guys, right? These, Especially in these dynasty leagues, which I'm, you know, getting into now and everything like that, these rookie guys are unproven, or it takes them a couple years. Or, you know, Dave, like you said, hey, cash in with the money while you can, right? You can always make a deal later, do whatever, draft what you're going to do. But, uh, you know, I'm hoping Gruden learned his lesson with the whole Amari Cooper thing. Right, so A B is still going to get his touches regardless of who the, you know the quality of the Q B or who he is, and at the end of the day, he is still Antonio Brown. So I'm good with drop riding him, you know, until he's 34, 35, like you said. 1250 FFPC Dynasty League number 16, 2018 champion Matt Ryan joining us here on the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour tonight. Eric Balkman and Dave Gerzak coming at you here on a glorious Friday night in Northeast Wisconsin. Once again, the phone number 347-426-3682 if you want to chime in and talk with us. Let's go to those phone lines right now. Caller in the 616, you are on the air with Balky, Dave, and Matt. Who are we talking to? Uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, <laughs> this this sounds like a completely and honest real name uh, here. Jimmy, what, what, uh, what's Jimmy on your Detroit. mind tonight? Well, Ryan Matt sounds like a, a smart cookie there. I would like to know if uh, <laughs> if I'm starting if I'm starting to go ahead and get in this dynasty stuff. Well, what should I do with with all these futures? <laughs> with, with, like, you like, know, with, uh, with future picks. What's that? With few, uh, Jimmy, are you talking about like future draft picks or what? What, yeah, what do you yeah, mean yeah. by? I'm I'm, okay. a, I'm a redraft guy and all these future draft picks. Um, it sounds like uh, uh, Ryan Matt's a pretty aggressive guy. I'm just looking for some tips, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> All right, Jimmy. I appreciate the phone. I appreciate the phone call, Jimmy. Matt, uh, or excuse me, Ryan, Matt. Uh, why don't you? Uh, what, how do how do redraft owners handle this when it comes to uh, switching over to become dynasty players? What's the proper way to handle picks? Hold them, flip them, collect more of them. What what what's been your experience? What has worked out best for you? So what's worked out best for me? And I appreciate the name change. 15 minutes into this whole thing that didn't take <laughs> long right but uh no it, i think i think it all depends on on the your whole league in general right e- each league is completely different so uh i've had success where i've you know gotten rid of my future you know my what would it be my 2019 pick and got a a first round 2018 pick you know ended up getting two uh two top 10 picks out of that so it's all depends. It completely depends on who you're dealing with in each league. Um, as, you know, what have I experienced so far? But again, what I'm still, <laughs> I'm still a newbie at this whole thing, man. But I, I'm all for, like you know, Dave, like you just said again, man. Is um, you know, if I can get the if I can get the right value trading those futures, um, and you know, kind of win right away, that's what I'm about. Thanks for the phone call, Jimmy. Appreciate that. And we're going to talk about the NFL draft here because we are, what is it, six days away from, from uh, the oh, so exciting. Yeah, it's going to be great. And by the way, if anybody's in northeast Wisconsin, come on over to Scuba's Poor House on Wisconsin <laughs> Avenue in Appleton. We'll be doing the uh, yeah, NFL. Let's hear the, let's hear your we're going to be doing the NFL draft party that night. We're, uh, Leo and Balky are going to broadcast from uh, 6 to 7. Uh, Central time that night with an NFL draft preview show. Hey, really? Yeah, we're going to hang out. We're going to have some beers after that. And then uh, our morning crew, uh, BJ and the Bear, BJ DeGroat and Brian Butch, former Wisconsin Badgers standout, they're going to be on hand interviewing. And I, I, I feel like I can break the news now, even though we haven't broken the news on local. Make sure you keep mad local air you running long. I will, I will. Jared Averderis, former Packers receiver, oh, nice. is going to be on hand. They're going to be uh, doing some cutaways during the draft, so that'll be a lot of fun. That's at Scuba's Poorhouse, Wisconsin Avenue, <laughs> brought to you by 95.3991 to score. Now, that is around the corner, six days away. Teams are going to be looking to replace some of their existing veterans on their squads, and the dynasty value of said veterans are subsequently going to go down as a result. Are there any players that you could think of right now that you are actually pretty concerned about heading into next Thursday with these teams looking to replace them with younger talents, Matt? Yeah, um, you know, I don't think this is a very strong class offensively when we're talking fantasy football. Obviously, you got your your wide receivers there, but it's a pretty muddled group. But um, the one guy that I do think he started to decline, you know, in the last year or so anyway is Jimmy Graham. Um, you guys touched on it at the beginning that there's three pretty solid tight ends, right? And uh, I think Green Bay with one of those first two – they're one of those two first-round picks. They're going whether it's one – 
Iowa guy or the other Iowa guy, right? Hogginson or Fant. Um, Green Bay's picking one of them to uh, kind of slide in there with, with Grant. Hey, do you have any feelings on Hawkinson v. Fant as, as far as Green Bay goes? Because I kind of do. You know, it, being more of a Mathers guy, I think I prefer Fant. What do you think, Matt? It, as far as Green Bay, I I think, yeah, Rodgers needs that. And he needs that that receiving tight end, that inside guy. Now when you're talking Hawkinson, I'm a Lions fan, so I'm right around you guys, but um, I'm more of a Hawkinson dude. But uh, as far as Green Bay, I think I like fans. A little bit more athletic. So, okay, this this is perfect, Matt, because I, what, what is Detroit pick in the first round? Are they eight? Our audio engineer Bryce also loves the Lions. Yeah, he does. He's a big fan. Um, I, Detroit is picking eighth in this draft, right, Matt? Yep, yep. Okay, so so let's say that they run the card up and, and Goodell reads uh, lines eighth overall pick T.J. Hawkinson, they, they Iowa. Up to w- the stand. Would you be would you be good with T.J. Hawkinson for for the Lions at eighth overall, or is that too early for him? No, I think it's it, that's I mean right in that range. I think everywhere I've seen it's between you know eight and twelve, eight and thirteen. If he's not going at eight, he's going at you know I've seen the Bengals, I've seen the the Broncos at ten, you know. Um, he, from what you know, everything that they've been saying, he's a he's an absolute stud, and uh, Lions need that. They don't. I mean, they picked up Jesse James, but uh, T.J. Hawkins is supposed to be a whole nother level. So I'd be completely cool with that. Well, Matt. Okay, Matt. Bryce. Bryce Katie. Bryce is to be complaining this whole off season. They better not take a tight end because they took Ebron at ten, and it's and he sucks. And now what are they going to do it again? He he's been he doesn't actually talk. But that it, way. but they're two different players though. Yeah, they're two different players, yeah. but you know he's. He's mad that they'll, even, what is it, five years later, that they'll now spend another, right. you know, top 15, top 10 pick on a tight end. By the way, Eric Ebron, pro bowler. Yes, with Andrew Luck. <laughs> with Andrew Luck. I mean, I was saying how Luck was going to come back from that shoulder. Oh, okay, maybe there we was, go. Let's not talk about that. That's a different show. We don't, we don't talk about that. <laughs> That's a different show. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the good thing is about Hawkinson is, is he is pretty pro ready, and you think about that Detroit offense, um, and, and I think it's in a little bit of um, change right now because, he, he, you know, no Golden Tate. I mean, obviously you still have Galladay and, and Marvin Jones, but I think with Matt Patricia, uh, he really wants to ride carry on Johnson. And, and, and Matt, who is, didn't they sign a, a veteran running back this offseason as well? They picked up C.J. Anderson. Um, C.J. Anderson, yeah. From the Rams. I mean, yeah, they tried doing the offer sheet stuck. to Malcolm Brown. Yeah. So, so I'm not dissing him at all. He's, he's awesome on Twitter. He's a great player. <laughs> yeah. He's a little chubby. He's awesome though. Listen, <laughs> I, I, I'm not a good player and I'm a little chubby, so I I, I can I can You're get behind that. You're in very good shape. Let's uh, talk about another guy who's in tremendous shape right now, but maybe not legally speaking, Dave. Yeah, I'm gonna read this question and maybe add a little something. Terry Hill's son was removed from his home this week, and the situation seems to be getting worse for everyone. I might add, except for Tyreek Hill's song. <laughs> How concerned are you? Or maybe Hill? it is. I don't know. You can take it for his parents. How concerned are you about Hill facing a long suspension this year, or even potentially seeing himself cut? Jesus, I, I don't. You know, don't bring these questions on me when pain, I own Hill. It's, listen, it's leave. painful to say, but this is we got to bring the real. Potentially on this show. seeing himself cut by Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a tough situation, right? But it'll be interesting how the NFL <laughs> Goodell handles this, right? He's got a. Uh, a wishwash track record there. You never know what he's going to do. And then obviously Andy Reid, how he's going to go about it. Um, I think he'll be suspended to what extent. I don't know. As far as being cut, um, I saw Andy Reid. He said what he, he said something in a press conference that he's not here to judge. He's here to coach, right? So I think um, Hill would be like Hunt was a tough one to swallow, but they obviously picked up the slack with that. For the Chiefs to lose Hill, I think that's uh, – I mean, that would bring them down to reality a little bit. So I think they're going to try and hang on to him as much as they can unless this thing obviously just goes complete, you know, in shambles or wherever the hell this situation takes them, you know. Um, and personally, in redraft, I mean, I'm staying away from Tyreek Hill and any, you know, redraft or um, things like that. I, I think it's interesting. I'm just going to comment on Kansas City yeah. and their actions. I think – what they did with Hunt was admirable and laudable. And then the problem for them is that it happened kind of again, and just as bad, worse, or whatever however you want to define it. It's not great. And Hill is a, is a much more difficult to replace position. He's, much, he's actually a way better player, more of an impact player than, than uh, Hunt was. Hunt is actually semi replaced. He's a replaced, but he's a running back. So it just shows you the right. value of a wide receiver because they are, they are acting more cautiously. I feel like if this was 
another running back that was, you know, very good, they would cut him. You know, I, right. I just feel like that now they're like, God, are we cutting all the talent on our team because of this? And the second one, it's, it's so much worse for them. Yeah. They no. have, have to swallow it. He is uh, currently FFPC redrafters are taking him at the 302 on average. Now, the latest he has gone in any FFPC uh, best ball draft within the last three weeks has been the 402. So not a lot of people are discounting him a whole lot right now. They're still drafting him very high. I want to do something on the show right now. And, and kind of hash this out. Matt, if I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, as we All started right. on April 19th. April yeah, 19th, would you rather? No, 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 not oh. would you rather. April 19th, 2019, we don't know what's going to happen. Quite frankly, a suspension, if it does come to uh, Four Hill, may not even happen in this season. It might happen next season. So I'm going to put you on the spot, Matt, right now. If there is a suspension for Tyree Kill this year, tell me how long you think it will be. Are we about to be? Oh, hold on, just let him answer. <laughs> uh, man, that is a tough one. Um, with it being this sort of situation, how AP was saying, I mean, I could see a, you know, six to eight games. You know, and, right. I mean, he did that's have a, a, you know, a track record in college too with that. So, or an incident, I guess, yeah. if you want to say. So they could look at that. Now that that is true. He's also been. It hasn't he? He's done like some domestic violence speeches, hasn't he? Or, or done some community service work? Dave, you own him in every dynasty league possible. You should know this. I, I haven't really been checking. That's fine. Let I'm me do sure this. He's done a few things. Let's do this. Maybe given out like the turkeys at Thanksgiving and whatnot. We might have done that. Let's do this. <laughs> you the county fair. You are a big Tyree Kill fan, okay? As far as fantasy goes. Yeah, okay? I'm not really a fan of. You yes, nobody's a fan of domestic violence. Um. So I want, I want to do this right now. Matt Ryan says he's going to be suspended six to eight games if he's suspended this year. Split the difference, call it seven. I say Tyreek Hill, I got five on him being suspended more than seven games this season. <laughs> you know what, Paul? It's only five bucks. I'll take, I'll take under seven games. All right, I got five on it. I got five on it. I got five on it. Quite frankly, I think you're going to win that one. I don't think I am. Nah, we'll, we'll so see. Why are we just okay, so, there, so hold on, so hold on. Why, why are you bet that way? Why are we supposed to bet? Because you were the Tyreek Hill fan. I figured you'd bet the under. Uh, I'll, I'll take the under seven. Fine, I'll take the over. All right. I got All right. Five. Now, now it's a, it's for, for clarity's sake why here, the other one's nullified. Because I figured I knew which way you were going. All right, so I got Tyreek Hill Good Friday. under seven. Game suspended. Now it's 2019. Okay. Yeah, we're about a year ago. Thank you. No, I'm saying this. It doesn't count if it's 2020. <laughs> oh right, sure. All right. So, I, so okay, the, Matt. I'm gonna. I feel like this interview is kind of. I, I apologize, right. Matt. Matt but, sorry. So, Dave, if you own Tyree Hill in all these leagues, have you been shopping him around? If you believe he's going to be suspended more than seven games? Um. No, not really. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, perfect. He's, he's, he's still a young guy in his prime. I feel like if he gets suspended, he'll get. He'll be fine. He'll come back. Yeah. But then you. Know, there's still, the, at that point, if he's suspended seven, eight games, or whatever it is, there's still maybe at that point a 20% risk of going all Josh Gordon or Justin Blackman, and maybe 30%, because he's just a whack job, kind of an idiot. Tyree Kill? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, right. I mean, this isn't, I mean, this isn't, this is the history should, of doing this. Dave, if you believe this, you should be shopping it more than you are. Well, maybe I will. <laughs> Great. Let's move on. You know, things change, Balky. They do change. What do you think, Matt? Should I be shopping Tyree Kill? Nah, no, nah, I think you're good, man. <laughs> I think you said on it too hard, but still young enough. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, it's lonely on my island. Have you seen here. his grill? <laughs> uh, he has a grill? Yeah, I didn't know he had a grill. It's like, you know, something else. Yeah, well, I'm going to check it out now. I'll be Googling that after the show. <laughs> uh, we're talking with 1250 FFPC Dynasty League number 16 champ uh, from last year, Matt Ryan. Let's talk about the Texans running backs because Deontay Foreman now moves on. One more year recovered from his Achilles injury that he suffered uh, all, all, all the way back in 2017. Can he push Lamar Miller enough to, to wrestle this starting job a, away from him in Houston sooner rather than later? Or do you think this is just simply Miller's job and Foreman just he doesn't have it in him to take the job away from him? How do you build this situation for, uh, for fantasy leagues in 2019, man? I think this is an interesting one to see what they're going to do with this. I, you know, Achilles, that's the new ACL of the old, right? So it's a tough thing to come back from. He did get in at the end of last year, so you've got to expect he's coming into this year as close to 100% as he's going to get. Um, the interesting thing is that the Texans let Alfred Blue walk, though, right? So they must feel good about Foreman, or they plan on taking a running back in the draft, um, Foreman being a, you know, a solid backup to start. 
I think Miller is as frustrating of a fantasy player he, as, as he is. I mean, he's still flirted with a thousand yards rush in the last three years he's been with Houston. He just doesn't get the touchdown production that he should or that we would expect. I like Miller. I think he, uh, if they let him get the touches, he could be a solid RB one. So I'd be riding with Miller in in this case over over Foreman. Just looking at the uh, the FFPC best ball drafters and how they're handling uh, both these guys right now, Deontay Foreman not being selected on average until the 1308, whereas Mr. Lamar Miller is still being selected at the 811. So I guess you can look at it one of two ways. Like, Form, Form, Foreman might be a, a good value in the 13th. You also like it. Hey, I can get a starting running back for one of the best offenses in the AFC at the end of the eighth round. Two different ways to look at it. I mean, there's uh, still the risk of the draft of the running back, right? That, there, there is the potential for that. But, I, I mean, how much of a risk are you taking drafting a starting running back at the end of the eighth round? Not, not much. Yeah, exactly. I, I that, that, I, I, and I think uh, that's my point. Speaking of the rookies, Dave. Uh, um, here we are. Do you have any favorite rookies, Matt Ryan, that impressed you at the combine or their pro days that you're looking closely to see where they land in the NFL draft? Balky well, and I use questions like these for our own lacking Personal game, yep. Don't, yeah. don't really Very lazy. <laughs> so I'm writing all this down. Yeah, um, I think those the, obviously those three tight ends with Hyginson, Fant, and then Irv Smith, right? It'll be interesting to see where they go. Um, with, uh, you know, have you seen a couple with the Patriots taking one of those guys, Irv Smith, something like that? The dude I like, like I said, the, the wide receivers are, it's a muddled bunch. I like Paris Campbell out of Ohio State. Um, being a Big Ten guy, I obviously saw more of him. But, uh, you know, I'm not high on DK Metcalf. He he obviously came in. He's a freak, everything like that. But um, as high as he, they got him projected going in some of these places, I don't see it. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to be interested in where, in where Campbell goes. And then the last dude is, uh, is Josh Jacobs. Um, if he can get into that Oakland offense and see, you know, with, with the other offensive weapons that they got on there, I think that would be a fun, a fun offense. Um, and then obviously pair him with, uh, with Crowell there too. It'd be interesting. So Dave, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Right, that's pretty interesting. Yes, it is. Yes. Paris Campbell. Doesn't really like Metcalf, which is we were kind of on board there. I, I wanted to talk about Metcalf here for a second because if you're familiar with how pro days work, Dave, oftentimes the measurables at the uh, individual's pro day are better than they are at the combine because you get the friendly scorekeeper, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you saw this, uh, but DK Metcalf at Ole Miss's pro day, uh, they remeasured his body fat, and uh, I couldn't believe it. Negative? Negative 7.8. Yeah, Just I figured that was Just blew me away. I, I was, uh, you know, I didn't think he could get any lower than 1.9, but negative 7.8. A lean feller. Yeah, I just, uh, listen. Uh, I, laid off the corn dogs. I, I sent him some flowers in the hospital. I, I just hope he gets out <laughs> real soon. Let's get to a couple emails here for you, Matt, uh, that came in from listeners this week. Uh, first one is from, if I can find it here, uh, Lance in Oklahoma City. If you have the 101 pick this year in a football guys league, are you drafting Saquon Barkley or Christian McCaffrey first? That is uh, Lance in Oklahoma City. And, Matt, I guess I'll, I'll leave this up to you. If you want to pick somebody else other than those two guys, uh, just let us know that too. But if you have the 101, which way are you going? That's a uh, – I think that's another tough one. It's uh, – I think I'm going Saquon, though, with – Cam Newton, the his, you know, his uncertainty, his injury, everything like that. And then there, there's just no other offensive weapons on the uh, on the Panthers, really. Um, the Giants, you got obviously Ingram. You got all those guys. Uh, Golden Tate going there now. Who who knows what he's going to do. But um, I think the tough thing is Eli, but you'll see if they draft a quarterback. I think Saquon's the, the safer bet out of those ones. And I, I would, if I had, I mean, I'd take him first over, over any of those other. Well, running backs as well. Dave, you still on Team Barkley at the 101? I know you were a few weeks ago, or yeah. a few months ago, last time you were on the yeah, show. Yeah, I'm, 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 uh, I'm not. I'm not. I like Barkley. I'm not that enthused. I, I love McCaffrey, so it's, it's actually very close. It is really close. For so for you, you'd rather have the 102. I mean, I no. I mean, I guess if I could get some other advantage from moving. Well, you'll to get you'll get to pick before the 101 yeah, in the second yeah. round. Yeah, I don't really know that the one pick advantage in the second round makes okay. it. Okay, that's fine. I, throw people it out people there. who do that, are, I think, are dumb, by the way. Or, or are they geniuses? <laughs> no, they're dumb. There's a fine line between <laughs> dumb and genius. Bill in Batavia, New York, 
Hey, Matt. I'll get the the better second round. All right. Thank you, Dave. (laughs) Of the three big rookie tight ends in this year's draft, Hawkinson, Fant, and Smith, do you have a favorite one for dynasty purposes in the FFPC? Congrats on the Dino title. That is from Bill in Batavia, New York. Thank you for the email, Bill. And I think you kind of... Uh, led up to this. I don't know if he's your favorite, but you, you seem to have taken a shine to uh, to Irv Smith there, Matt. I like Irv Smith. Um, <laughs> and thanks, Bill. I appreciate it. Um, I think he's he's the most, most athletic. For Obviously, this is all for fantasy purposes, right? And it all depends on that situation. It depends on, on how, you know, how high Hawkinson goes, but um, I think Irv Smith is the most athletic. He's more of a slot, right? But he's a little <laughs> smaller. I think he could cause some mismatches, but... Uh, no, I would go with Irv Smith. And he was a guy, I, I listened to the uh, football guys audible uh, this past week with Sigmund Bloom and, and Matt Waldman, and, and Matt Waldman, who uh, you can get the rookie scouting portfolio from him, and, and uh, we, we love his work. He, he works hard, obviously. Um, the uh, He said Irv Smith actually might be the best run-after-catch guy of any of the three tight ends as well. Um, I was, you know, a, a lot of the talk here in Northeast Wisconsin is, is how the Packers have not taken a, a tight end, drafted a tight end very high in a long time. And with the two first-round picks this year, I would much rather see them draft Noah Fant at 30 rather than TJ Hawkinson at 12. If I had my druthers, I think they're both going to be very good pros, uh, and we'll see what happens there. But I think Irv Smith's another guy that, that you know, for anybody drafting at the end of the first round, you could see New England try to replace Gronk with uh, with Irv yeah. Smith there as well. So that makes some uh, some sense as well. Uh, Matt has been very gracious with this time, Dave. I want to ask him one final question before we, we let him go and enjoy his weekend. All right, so we're going to talk more redraft here. So uh, let's flip the switch, if you could. Uh, a player that you're going to be staying away from the early rounds uh, in the 2019 season and a guy who is a sleeper that will be poised to break out in this great 2019 NFL season. And if you want to frame this with dynasty startups or rookie, too bad. rookie drafts, no, not too bad. Matt, whatever you, you want. No, listen, Matt, whatever you want to do, don't listen to Dave. He's not privy uh, to, to the way we like to do the show. He's, he hasn't been on this show since the Clinton administration. So it's totally fine whichever way you want to go with this. No, I'm with him. I'm actually with him on the redraft thing. Um, I don't know if this one's too easy or not. So I, I – uh, yeah, what you even said, he's starting to drop a little bit is, is Gurley with the uncertainty with his knee, right? With um, McVay, he, I mean, they know that something's up there with, uh, you know, matching the Lions offer sheet for Malcolm Brown. So uh, I wouldn't put that, you know, as high of stock as he has been going in the, uh, you know, in, in the in the most recent years. The other one that <laughs> you see him going in some pretty high uh, slots is Godwin. Right, I mean, it's not those those first couple rounds, but uh, we'll see what happens with Chris Godwin. I know he's been getting a ton of hype, and um, you know they're saying that he can play the Larry Fitzgerald role. But at the end of the day, I mean, Evans still has to get his touches, and Jameis Winston still is the quarterback, right? So um, that's someone I'm not, you know, I'm not jumping the gun on taking. Uh, as far as sleepers, I mean, I'll stay with the with the Bucks there and Ronald Jones. Um, and what he did with David Johnson over over in Arizona, he's going to be getting his touches. And he's kind of, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't say he's a sleeper, but he didn't produce his, you know, what they thought he was going to do last year in his, in his rookie year. Um, just excited to see what he's going to do there. And then Carlos Hyde, I think, is the other one. If he can win that starting role, um, you know, over Damian Williams there in, in, uh, in KC, I think he could have a, uh, a monster year. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me just, I'll let Balky you know, summarize everything because that's what he does. I will just say that, uh, by the way, I, I know you've mentioned Godwin, and I, I appreciate you at least accepting my, my trade protest ruling. And oh, here we go. Numbers, <laughs> he went involved. Oh, man. Matt, no offense or anything, buddy. Sorry about that. That was a great interview. Yeah. No, we're good, man. We're good. <laughs> Matt okay. doesn't seem right. upset. No, he doesn't. It's, cool. not, it's not easy. You know, I, hey, look, I, hey, what, I, what I've taken, I would have obviously taken the field side. I thought that was the good right side of this race. Can I summarize? Unfortunately, I can't. I can't make decisions for all these other guys. Anyway, I'll, I'll let Paul. Keep well, the only, I, I just wanted to point out for, for so so Matt said uh, Todd Gurley, uh, who has slipped now, he's basically the 101 last year. He has slipped to the 106, right behind McCaffrey and Kamara, but still going ahead of Le'Veon Bell and Melvin Gordon. Chris Godwin has shot way up. He is going at the 508 in FFPC drafts right now. That is right after Julian Edelman and Robert Woods, but it's before Cooper Cup 
and DJ Moore. Uh, Ronald Jones, uh, who is a, a mid-first-round pick in uh, uh, rookie drafts last year, is going at the 1509 right now. That is behind Isaiah Crowell and Kalen Balazs, but it is ahead of Jamal Williams and the ageless Adrian Peterson. And last but not least, Carlos Hyde, the newest Kansas City Chief running back, going at the 1103. He shot up all the way to the 1103, and he is going behind Miles Sanders and Jalen Samuels, going ahead of Austin Eckler and uh, Damian Harris. So there you have it. Uh, as far as those picks go. Matt, great analysis from you tonight. Really appreciate your insight. Uh, congratulations on the 1250 Dynasty number 16 title last year. Good luck defending that this year. Good luck in the football guys draft in all your leagues this year. We really appreciate you coming on, making some time for us this week. And we'll talk to you again soon, dude. This was fun. Uh, I appreciate it, guys. Hey, Dave, no hard feelings, man. <laughs> We're all good. All right, hey, thanks, buddy. Protein, protein. <laughs> now there you go. It's, 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 it's care, an guys. open window. All right, okay. we'll see you. Matt Ryan, 1250 FFPC Dynasty League number 16, uh, champion from 2018. Great stuff from him. Hey, uh, I thought about this. Yes, sir. Uh, in one of my leagues, I found out I have the 101 uh, right. Dynasty pick what today. You, dipshit? You, you're going to pay attention to what yeah, I'm I, I thought I had the 102, but I have the 101. Congratulations. In another league, I have the 107. Oh, John Terry, we'll get to that protest in a minute. All right. Damian Williams is a free agent in both those leagues. So 101, 107. Yep. What do you do with Damian Williams? Definitely not the 101. Okay, so. hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me preface this by saying, <laughs> let me preface this by saying, Kansas City say, hold on, takes, yeah, a, run, takes a running back on day three, like round six. Okay. That doesn't matter. That's, that's my point. But he, still has to, he does have to deal with Carlos Hyde. He I does. feel like I have kind of a little bit crapped on Carlos Hyde, and I feel like I've not given him the adequate respect. He, he does kind of deserve because he's had a couple good seasons, you know. Uh, so I, you have to – there is a slight concern that Hyde beats him out, I guess. That's possible. For what it's worth, with F-W Carlos Hyde, Hyde I mean, go for it. the Niners let him go. The I Browns know. traded him away. I know. The Jaguars let him go. I know. It's all true. How valuable is this guy? I don't. I don't think he's all that valuable. I agree. Okay. I'm You're just, kind of sticking up for him a little bit. I'm just. I'm just. You know, but again, Damian Williams. Who the hell is he? He crushed it down the playoffs last year. Yeah, yeah, three good games, whatever, four years. Okay, that was huge. <laughs> and and this is this is and this is after Kareem Hunt was gone, Dave, and and they have not addressed. You know, you, you've changed a lot over the years. I'm going to tell people this. You know, I remember, how much? No, how much? All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you how you changed. All right. All right. Back in the original auction league, I'm going to you know way back in the day. We were first playing fantasy together, me and you. Yeah. I remember you drafting Sean Alexander. You were auctioning for Sean Alexander and two other, like Lavernius Coles and some other, you know, whatever guy that was expensive at the time. And you auctioned your three players, and you were all pissed off because it was early in the auction. Okay. Because we had two hundred dollars, right? And you were down like thirty after, and you had three players. Yeah. And you went and sat on the couch, and everybody else was still at the table. I don't remember this at all. And, I, and you're like, oh, I, you know, I just can't get away from, I can't get away from these guys, you know, yeah. certain guys. I'm like, well, you know, what about? I said something to the effect of, what about some of these rookies? And you, you pretty much said. I, I won't take a player unless he's screwed himself like I, I, and you, and that okay. was how you were. That is true. And you, and, and you, you paid like 70 bucks for right. Sean Alexander, whatever, whatever it was. And it's fine. It was, it was the way you were at the time. You are right. I was that way. It was very, very difficult for me to sink. And now three games. Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> three I've seen. Games. Three well, Dave, here's the thing. He's proven now. Well, you know, the truth of the matter, you know, I've he's more, here, tell you this, he's more proven than Josh Jacobs. I'm going to flip my own script. He's more proven than DK Metcalf. <laughs> That's all true, right? Yeah. It is all true. And he's had 30-point games. I mean, there's right. not a lot of running backs that have 30-point games. Just like, there, you know, when John Best had a 50-point game, I still remember it because no one has 50-point right. games. Now, I wouldn't take him at the 101 either. Um, but the, 107, the 107 is yeah. something to consider. Yeah, right? and that's why I wanted to bring it up on the show tonight. I, I kind of agree with you. Because I don't know what to do there. I'm, you know what I'm kind of hoping for is Kansas City takes a running back <laughs> on, like, day one or day two, and then I'm just like, okay, I don't have to worry about it now, you know? Well, but if they don't, then this is – it's getting real. You know what's interesting for you is if you're at the 107, why not try and pick off the Carlos Hyde owner and, and pop over, like, the 304 or something like that? Like a third, yeah, and third round pick for Williams. Williams. Yeah, while you're on the clock yeah. at 107, that might not be a terrible move. Yeah. Especially assuming, you know, that the draft's been... And, and, and assuming Williams, by the way, is still there. Because if he's not there, then I'm, right, I'm yeah. not if making he, the hide deal. Right. If he's right. still there, yeah. Or he might even be able to... I, would, I don't know. Who knows? You know, quite if, frankly... If some of these dynasties, well, you can't on. get someone to respond. Quite frankly, 
Hyde might be a free agent in that league too. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, so I don't. Yeah, there you go. Lock it up. Lock it up. All right. Thanks to Football Guys, Roto World, and Rob for tonight's rundown. Oh, by the way, just real quick on the trade. Yeah. They want to know about the trade. Oh yeah, you go ahead. Yeah. So this was uh, the trade protested 1250 number 16. I actually know about this because Balky and I kind of referenced it today. Right. It was Adam Thielen, the 109, and the 209 from this year's draft. Right. Uh, for Chris, Chris Godwin. Godwin a 2020 random first. I don't know what team it was, so whatever. But I mean, it, it was the 20, in the 2019 303. Right. So effectively, the, the 303 and the 209 kind of balance out. I kind of gave the equivalency of the 2020 first and the 109 balancing out more or less because there's a 67% chance that it's better than the 109. Right. The one to and you have to wait. You have to wait a year. And you have to wait a year. So that's so generally it. it's worth a bit less. And definitely, Thielen is worth more at this point than Godwin. At this point. But you do have the coach talking about him catching 100 passes, and he's five years younger. He wants to be 29 this year. Yeah, so, and by the way, and what could be a run, a big time run offense in Minnesota too. Right, big time run offense, and you have you know Winston playing the ball around in the air raid offense, whatever. Anyway, the point that as a commissioner I had to make is just that. Well, I felt it didn't, wasn't necessarily a totally even trade. You would really, rather have the Thielen side of the deal, but right. it was not enough for you to... Yeah, I'm not going to flip that. I'm not going to overrule the paying owners that decided to make that deal. Right. So that, that, that was it. And quite frankly, after this season, the Godwin side could look great. I mean, it's po- absolutely possible. Yeah. Absolutely possible. All right, I want, uh, so I already thank Football Guys Riddle Learn and Rob. did it again. Jacksonville head coach Doug Marone said Leonard Fournette will not face any team punishment for his arrest last week. Now, he had a traffic incident that when you consider it, it it's kind of minor in, in NFL offseason. Really? No, this is Leonard Fournette. <laughs> Leonard Fournette, the oh. starting running back. Thank you, Jay. Really has not endeared, he has not endeared himself uh, to this organization. Now, here's, here's the... the um, you know, by the way, you can't have your job or you, you can't really have a solid lock in your job if you get a traffic ticket and the team is talking about like, cutting you. But go ahead. Okay, well, that's my point here now. Do you think Jacksonville utilizes a day one or day two pick on a running back, Dave? That's better than Fournette. Uh, Doesn't well, have to be better. It just the, the fact I that if, if they are soaking an asset into that, they honestly believe that this will improve their football team, and they're not going to draft somebody like that just to be a backup. Uh, I don't think that they do. I mean, I don't know. So this is a non-story for you. It is. It Would is. you be looking to sell Fournette right now? No, I'd be looking to buy Fournette. In fact, I was looking to buy Fournette from you, and then you passed on the trade offer, which was quite a nice offer, if I might add. Smartly passed on the <laughs> on both offers. I thought your first offer was better than your second one. I don't even remember the second one. The second, so I'll I'll. I was in the rehab then. I will give yeah, <laughs> I will give comments on on pretty much all trades of why. Yeah, I, you know what? That why, one wasn't very good. Why I'm rejecting it or accepting it? Usually rejecting it because most of the offers you get are bad. Um, the first one I I was like, oh, this is actually not that bad. Now nah, I'm, I'm gonna roll with Fournette. I'm I'm starting to like him. The second, the second one was like one, a five for one. Ah, like, oh, come on. It wasn't that bad, but I was like, this, 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 the first offer was, was better. Yeah. I didn't bother commenting on that one. I just flat out rejected it. I'll keep that in mind when I get a no comment rejection. No. Then, yeah, if you get a no comment from me, that means do better. New England signed wide receiver Demarius Thomas to a one-year deal. Now, it's only three hundred grand guaranteed, and it doesn't force the team uh, to carry Demarius Thomas into the regular season. If you remember... Back when Josh McDaniels, who uh, is the current offensive coordinator for New England, he once upon a time was the Broncos head coach who drafted Demarius Thomas in the first round. New England obviously needs an outside receiver, but DT is coming off that nasty Achilles tear. Uh, It's possible that Demarius Thomas makes the team, starts the season on the pup list, doesn't come back till the mid part, part of the season, Dave. Um, I will tell you right now, I own him in one dynasty league. I sent out 11 trade offers um, for Demarius Thomas for um, a, uh, everybody's second-round pick. Nobody's bit so far. How many rejections have you got? Uh, three. <laughs> <laughs> People are such idiots. You know, the email comes in your inbox. Just hit reject. Yeah. So you have eight pending offers? I have eight pending offers. I'm not right. in my league with you, I You know what's funny is like – Kentucky league? Uh, yes, it is. Um, you know what's funny about that is like – Biplab Mandel, former guest of the show. The um, notorious VIP. The notorious VIP. He is in that league with me. And I'm telling you, man, and, and I think, like, uh, you know, there's a few guys in the chat room right now, Wasp guy. And, yeah, they and, all know. Yeah, they're in league with Aunt Jemima. I sent him an offer, immediate rejection, <laughs> but then I got, like, four trade offers from him, <laughs> like, right away. He has hey, been – alive. I'll, I'll tell you this, right, and maybe he doesn't want me sharing this. He has been trying to get James White from me for over a year now in that league. Yeah, for what? Sell him. No, I don't want to sell him because I need, I need running backs in that league, and he has not gotten 
anything tempting for me in no, that in that league right now. Enough. I'll tell you this right now, Bip. Send me a first round pick for James White. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do that deal. Yeah, I, th- I think the Patriots would do that too. Yeah, I'm not sure they would. <laughs> uh, but uh, so far, I haven't uh, found anything yet. Uh, Demarius Thomas. I-, I don't think he's going to be much this year, if anything. I don't even know if he makes the team. Yeah, I'm hanging on to him. The Achilles heel is just even going back to Dante Foreman. I, I name a player and hope you know these. All right, we have four intelligent people in the chat room. And they can, unlike us, they can actually all put stuff in there. Right. Name a player, running back or receiver, that has come back from an Achilles heel, period. There's nothing else. There's yeah. nothing else. I, I, I can't Name think. a player that has come back from an Achilles heel injury and done anything. Yeah. Uh, and so we can keep talking and then someone names someone. No, that's fine. So you, you don't like the Mary's Thomas this year? I have him in a couple of weeks. I wish he was any good. I, and I, so are you, you hanging tight? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I would sell him for a second as well. Actually, yeah, okay. I think this, I think this draft is actually fairly on a deep tip. I agree. I totally agree with that. Yeah, I don't, I don't like it necessarily stuff. top heavy, but I think it's pretty deep. You want to have bullets in the second round. It's for funny sure. we talked about Bryce Love earlier, and we haven't talked about. Oh it my God! Now remember all of a sudden on Twitter, everybody's like waking up, like, oh, Bryce Love is so great. It's like, yeah, he's he's pretty great. He's going to go in the late second, early third right. round, probably. Now, do you re- in rookie draft. Do you remember when everybody thought he was going to skip his senior year, and it was like, okay, well, the 101 is Barkley, the 102 is Bryce Love. Yeah, exactly. And then he had this really bad year. You know, he had some nagging injuries or whatever. Now nobody's even talking. Torn ACL. Yeah, yeah torn ACL late. And, and Nobody's even talking about him as a first-round rookie draft pick. Yeah, right. I mean, so it's not like he had a Marcus It's not like he had a Marcus Lattimore. Remember Marcus Lattimore? He had, oh, he that, had that injury, bad. and that was like he apparently his leg got torn off as if like a Velociraptor ate it off and, and chewed it up or whatever. And they have not it. heard that comp yet. But I mean, so that that's what happened to Marcus Lattimore. You know what his ADP was? Like the 111. No, his, it was, was it really? Yeah, oh yeah, it was. was like that's a 111 right. Club. He was yeah. there. I was so happy in fantasy starts. I bought him for that, waited the whole year, and then sold him for about that same price, and I couldn't be happy when he did, did, Didn't you but, flip him to um, uh, Corn Fence? No, it was uh, Jeff else. Terbassi. Uh, I know I, Jeff Terbassi was a big Marcus Lattimore. Somebody else bought him. Regardless, I mean, Bryce Love, he's going to go in the late second, early third. I think that's a good deal for yeah. him. There's other – I mean, Andy Isabella, his ADP right now is like 19. Wow, wow. And granted, you have to find one other team smart enough to run him around in the slot and stuff, but I mean, I, like I've said before, I think he's actually capable of playing okay. outside even at 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, of course. Now, this is... Uh, there's oh, not... McGahee. There's not... That. Yeah, that's... Uh, right. Well, t- was that an Achilles, though? I thought, that I, thought was an ACL. That was, I thought it was ACL. Shredded his knee. It was more than an ACL, but I thought it was a knee thing. Remember when Frank Gore tore his ACL? And, oh, he's injury prone, except for the rest of his life. Yeah, exactly. I think he still gets hurt. I think he just plays through it. <laughs> You did have a six wonder lick. You may not know. <laughs> All right. Speaking of six wonder licks, this next story is kind of bizarre. Now, Ian Rappaport tweeted today that the scouts for the Raiders were actually sent home today and are not expected to return ahead of the draft next week. Mike Mayock from NFL Network fame, who is the new Raiders GM, was handpicked by John Gruden after he forced Reggie McKenzie out last year and, quote, Mayock isn't sure who he can trust with his draft secrets. What? I, I, I mean, I've never... It's, six, it's hilarious. Six days before the draft, the, the entire scouting uh, staff is, is gone, and, and they're not allowed to be back. The Raiders so, have picks 4, 24, and 27 in this draft. Now, to be fair, I'm going to let you talk in a second. Right. Daniel Jeremiah at Move the Sticks from NFL Network said that when he was um, working on scouting staff, uh, a lot of times... Back in 2003, everybody is privy to the big board. And then towards the end of his tenure when he was working, only like three or four people, owner, GM, yeah, you know, head coach. Was, actually, I don't think it's as crazy as it sounds. And he, he said this was not all that crazy for them to do it. Still, though, have not seen this reported before for a, a team doing this, <laughs> especially for the reason of, you know, some sort of parent. I can't trust any of you able. Yeah, like, like is Mike Mayock, like, urinating in jars and keeping it in, in his hotel room? <laughs> like, this is just so, so bizarre. That, that Keep in mind, these guys are all paid like you know twenty four five a year. Yeah. Scout people. They're paid literally nothing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> John Terry in the in the chat room. It is the Raiders. <laughs> it's, I, you know that's all you have to say. I mean, just just really really weird. So, going to make the first round so compelling. At Scuba's Poorhouse on Wisconsin Avenue in Appleton, Wisconsin. You know what, I'm going to be in Marco Island. Anyone wants to come down there and hang out. I'll be in some bars, some sports bar down there. Yeah. Hang out with Aaron and uh, Nick Manifield. Now yeah, there you go. So anyway, go um, ahead. What do you think? So what do you think ESPN and NFL Network are going to do when Mayak makes picks? Because this is now the the script is flipped completely. 
now the guy who would always rip on other people's picks, they're all going to kiss his ass, right? No, I don't think they will. I think NFL Network will. I, I don't know why they – why would they? Oh, Mike Mayock. Oh, he was so good here. Oh, There's God. probably guys in the NFL Network that wanted to take shots at him uh, when he worked there but couldn't because they were colleagues, and now they can because he doesn't work for him. I hope they do. I really hope they do. Yeah, yeah, I, you know I, what? He's I don't, kind of a tool bag. He has a toupee also, by the way. I don't know if you know that. But uh, I just never liked him. Does he really? No, I don't know if he does at all. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think he did. Um, I don't think any punches are going to be pulled. It, it'll be fun. Uh, speaking of pulling punches, ugh, Todd Gurley. He says he's, quote, feeling pretty good, and there, and there wasn't really any discussion about an off-season procedure on his knee. Has he, been, has he seen TMZ? Oh, with the limping of video? Himself? Has he seen himself on, on, I, I, on the TMZ? I'm sure he did, and he probably has, ah, you know, I was just sitting for a long time and just trying to get the blood flowing back, back there. He's um, having a steak dinner. Takes a couple hours. Dave, quote, feeling pretty good isn't exactly a resounding, <laughs> yeah, dude, let's, I wish the season started tomorrow. I'm ready to go. Uh, he says that um, he doesn't know how he's going to feel six months from now, and he's taking it day by day. Ugh. Now, the Rams didn't go out and sign any big-time running backs. You heard from Matt Ryan. They, they matched the Malcolm Brown offer sheet uh, to the Lions. Um, we'll, we'll see what they do um, in, in uh, the NFL draft right now. But going at the 106 and FFPC best balls, man, I'm going to find other guys I like better at that point. Well, you know, it's interesting when you have Le'Veon Bell going right after him. The question is, do you take the player that is a total – I mean, Le'Veon Bell is a total star player, right? Yeah. On a team – a lesser team with a young quarterback and just assuming he's going to be in shape and play well, or do you take the risk of, a, you know, an NFC championship caliber team, a guy who's been hurt and didn't really produce late, you know, another stud player? It's a, kind of an interesting little quandary, actually. We don't have time for it right now, but I'll tell you this. After Todd Gurley – for FFPC ADP right now, Le'Veon Bell, DeAndre Hopkins, Melvin Gordon, Devontae Adams, James Conner. I'd rather have all those guys rather than Todd Gurley right now. I would feel safer with, with all of them as well. I actually would. The I, time I start considering Gurley is for the two guys after, or the three guys after that. James Con- excuse me, Odell Beckham, David Johnson, Zach Ertz. That's when I start uh, contemplating Todd Gurley. To me, I, I, you know, Ertz is a different story because it's a different position, but Odell Beckham and David Johnson, I mean, I find it hard – Make, how do you make an argument against Odell Beckham with Baker with a much, much, much better quarterback than he had before? Well, there's a, there's, there's a lot of other talented players around him there. And I think Baker Still, Mayfield he's a, is he's talented enough. He's the alpha male at wide receiver. I mean, and Joku has not done really much, to be truthful. Right? Charles Landry is going to catch a lot of passes again. He's been, he was just okay, though, last year. I mean, just say, you know, Beckham is the alpha male. He's, he's going to get command passes, command respect. You know, there was still Sterling Shepard and Evan Ingram with, you know, the corpse of Eli Manning over right, there last yeah. year. So, I, I, I don't know. I, just, I feel like Beckham is totally underrated. You know me. I've never been the biggest Beckham guy. No, you I, haven't. I've no. traded for him in two dynasty leagues this offseason. I actually am I'm really big on Beckham this year. Going at the 112 right now in FFP. And David ADP. Johnson, for God's sake, so he was RB9 last year on, on a, a bad, total, on a bad totally team off, with a bad season. Awful team. Yep. A bad team, bad season. Scored very few touchdowns. David Johnson is a stud running back, still kind of in his prime. Was he 27, 28? Um, uh, I think he'll be 28 this season. And he's even, and he, he still he has the same goals: a thousand running rushing yards, thousand receiving yards. I, what about Michael Thomas? Would you rather Gurley or Michael Thomas? Thomas, actually. All right, let's let's dip dip our toes All right, a little I bit. No, I, okay, Todd Gurley or Joe Mixon? Hmm. Gurley. Todd Gurley or Nick Chubb? Gurley. I'm going to switch to receivers now. Julio Jones. I'm kind of looking at Julio, actually. Julio is crushing it still. Juju Smith-Schuster. <laughs> or Todd Gurley. Juju. Wow. I don't know. I don't know why. why? What's wrong with Juju? I, gonna... I just, I'm really. Been... Okay, I grant it. Juju has been had their historical first right. two seasons. Now, now, here's the thing. Last season, and I know, and, and, and I wish this didn't happen, but it did. Now it's in, the, it's in, it's in my mind. That one game where he didn't have Antonio Brown opposite him was not good. I know it's only one game. That is as small as a sample size as it gets. It still does concern me a little bit that when well, he I mean, was that's a focal point. And he played in the slot a lot last year, a right. lot, like a ton. Yeah. There was a ton of times where he would just run around for like, run five yards and then curl it and then you know, big number of throws in. Last one, Todd Gurley or Dalvin Cook? Todd Gurley. Let's move on and talk about emails. Welcome back. Dave, do you guys see any fantasy value for Chris Hogan signing in Carolina now? That's Bob in Oxnard, California. Thank you for the email, Bob. I will. Uh, I know he said, welcome back, Dave. I'm going to answer this. I don't see much from Chris Hogan at all. No, I, I just think Hogan's not that good. 
I think Hogan was always I, they would always try to make him the white yeah. whatever in New England. Right. And he was still a white whatever wherever. New England needs receivers, dude. And they could have re-signed Chris Hogan. They chose not to, and they signed a guy coming off an Achilles tear. Comes off, yeah, an injury that no one recovers from. Chris Hogan going at the 2606 in FFPC drafts right now. I think that's was, all you need to know. He's all right. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Joe in Plymouth, Michigan. Are we better off focusing on Corey Davis, Adam Humphreys, and Taewon Taylor in Tennessee this year and ignoring the tight ends, Delaney Walker and Johnny Smith? Love the show. That's Joe in Plymouth, Michigan. No. You are – okay, number one, I don't think you're a big Mariota fan. Not really. Number two, I don't think you're a big ten- Tennessee Titans passing offense fan. Not the, not the most. I know you don't like Corey Davis. No. But you think you should not ignore the tight ends in this offense. I don't think you should ignore Humphreys. I don't think you should ignore uh, Delaney Walker. Delaney no, Walker's he's, saying, he's saying, should I focus on the receiver? No, I know. I, yeah, Walker, he's a damn good football player. He's coming off an injury. Season yeah, I know. Ending injury. It's fine. He's a great player. He's old. Yeah. Uh, John Smith has not done enough. Also to, coming off an so, ending injury. To, uh, to take any real... Thing away from Delaney Walker. And, you know, Derrick Henry is not a pass catching back. Deion Lewis is a pass catching back. But I mean, it sounds to me like, to me, it seems to me that they really know that they want to put their best players on the field and have Derrick Henry be the guy at running back, which means they're not going to throw as much as Deion Lewis out there in the less of third down and third and long. So I, I, I feel like Delaney Walker's having a pretty good season, actually. Yeah, um, I am probably staying away from Delaney Walker. I'm, uh, you know, these guys that they I think can... Henry's cheap, by the way, to answer Waspat's question. Delaney Walker. Fourth round ADP. Uh, yeah, Delaney Walker going at the 903. I guess in a tight end premium league, that's uh, that's, that's decent. Yeah, that was... uh, Derek Henry, you want to know where he's going? Is that the question? Yeah, probably the fourth, right? 309. 309 is where he's oh, going really? right now. Yeah. Fuck you. So there you go. Um, oh, Shane Hallam is in the chat room. Just I'm just seeing this now. Awesome to see him in there. Did you uh, never peg Tennessee? Uh, that's funny. We we mentioned. Pegging at work today. Brian in Hazel, Ohio. <laughs> Do you two feel like Ronald Jones is a good buy low right now it's in Dynasty? I know it is. <laughs> Ronald Jones, buy low in Dynasty? Have you floated any offers up for him? No, unfortunately, because I own him in a few he's, weeks. He's, he's pretty, I mean, I would say late second for him as well. He's one of the rare guys, and this happens in time to time, and for, at least for me in Dynasty. They're not players that I want to sell, they're also not players I want to buy. I just yeah, stand I, pat. If I got him on my roster, I'll keep him. If I don't have him on my roster, I'm good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It yeah, sounds I, weird, but that's that's the way I, I've treated you know, I, I certain that, players. I point that to a stock that you bought, and you're like, oh, you know, I bought this stock, and I probably shouldn't have, and now it's down a number of points. I don't want to buy any more of this crap. Right. But there's a chance you can recover and actually be worth something. Right. So I'm, I'm just going to hang on to this garbage. Totally the way I feel. Yeah. Do you think Ronald Jones is garbage? I think he could be garbage. He had, okay, they've been talking him up a little bit. Uh, he you said they said he's the most impressive player in offseason workouts. I think Jason Lick said that, the GM. The I, I, I think there's absolutely – I mean, he couldn't be any worse. He was super talented. He was, super, he was a really good player in college. He talked like a pro, I remember. He did he, talk like a pro. He, he made he, me watch that interview in the he, rain. You know, and in truth, maybe he just had – you know, people sometimes are just not ready for the pros. And yeah. this could be it. I mean, new, new offensive team. I mean, the, the coaching staff. So maybe, why not? Um, it's a lot better if it was the same. If, if it was still Dirk Cutter or whatever, oh, no dice. That's do you bad. know where he is now, by the way? Uh, dad, I don't know. No. Offensive <laughs> coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, good for him. Um, well, Watch guy says he's not buying the Rojo hype. But, there's a, but that's not – there's no hype. Well, people are – I mean – Where's he going? Is he in trap 112? The, the, the people paying the 112 the, for him? The Bucks are hyping him up. Yeah, that's – no one. but people are not paying dynasty hype prices for Rojo. Uh, I don't know what they're paying for him in Dynasty. I can tell you he's going at the 1509 in best balls right tell now. Tell you what, while you're farting around, I will look at Well, I'm done farting around. I will look, at, I'll look at a few trades for Ronald Jones on real FFPC leagues and see if I can find the, the t- This last point I'm going to make of Ronald Jones and, and what, while Dave looks that up is, it, and I, I don't think I'm shattering anybody's ears by saying this, it's going to depend upon what they do in the draft. They had the opportunity – to add players in free agency. They, had, they could have made a run at Le'Veon Bell. They chose not to. He went to the Jets. And they have Peyton Barber, <laughs> Quiz Rogers, and, you know, in addition to Ronald Jones there. It, it's, the, the cupboard is bare. And I know Bruce Arians probably just wants to throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it, especially when you have Winston and Evans and Godwin and Howard and Bray. You have all these players. There. I'm sure that's what he wants to do. But you do have to run the ball at least to a certain level. Now, if Tampa – avoids running backs in, in the first two rounds. I know Josh Jacobs has, has been mocked to them quite a bit. Uh, we'll see what happens there. 
But if they just invest a, a running back on day three, then, yeah, I'm going to be a lot more bullish on Ronald Jones. What has he been flipped for in FFPC dynasties lately, Dave? You know, this is a little unfair because these were all going around the trade deadline. So it's really interesting. Um, let me just – I'm going to write them, I'm writing them all down here. So he went – this is, again, the trade deadline. People are having to cut players to make these trades, right? I mean, so it's like you're either going to trade him or you're not. And so I've seen – he went for the 2023rd. The 606, the 611, Ugh. the 312, and the 207. But wow. I, I, th- I, think in, I think in real dynasty leagues where you're not having roster cutdowns, because all the trades around Jones in FFPC, oddly enough, no one, no one in all of our dynasty leagues has traded Ronald Jones since roster cuts. Not, not a single person. So everybody's having that attitude about the no one, yeah, no one, in like 20 some days. Right. No one's made that trade. So, I mean, I would actually argue that the value is the late second. Okay. Um, Wash guy chiming in. He wants to know Derek uh, Henry's value. I'm assuming it's Derek Henry. Uh, is it greater than Damian Williams right now? In dynasty? Yeah, I think so. For yeah, sure. I, I am. Hundred uh, I am on that as well. I'm still on the pedigree bandwagon. Shane Allen points out he's like uh, Chiefs are going to draft a running back, and I think they will too. Whether it's round one, round two, round three, or rounds four through seven, um, that remains to be seen. Um, but I mean. And, you know, we're down on this running back class in general, but if a team is soaking a top 90 pick into a running back, you have to take them seriously as far as usage goes uh, and as far as um, the veterans that are already there, and and, and that's going to go down. Remember, it doesn't matter what you think about a player. It doesn't matter how you value his talent. It doesn't matter how good of a pro you think he is. What matters is what the team believes, what the staff, uh, what what the GM believes what the coaching staff believes, because that is what is going to happen on the field. They are going to get every opportunity, if they are a high draft pick or if the coaches love them, that's, they're going to get the volume. They're going to get the chances to do it. If you believe a player is going to be a super stud and the team doesn't, that player is never going to be a super stud because he's never going to get the opportunity on the field. Or in rare cases, maybe he will, but a lot of stuff's going to happen for that. I think that's something that's important to keep in mind uh, this time of the year at the NFL draft right around the corner. Final email of the night, Bill in Park City, Kentucky. Happy Easter, fellas! Who is the correct Texans receiver to draft this season? Will Fuller or Kiki QT? Enjoy the draft. That is Bill in Park City, Kentucky. If I can add a right into this question, Dave, the correct <laughs> Texans receiver to own this year, DeAndre Hopkins. Well, this is the hard-hitting analysis people are looking for. Well, uh, <laughs> you tell me who you'd rather have this year, and I will tell you where they are going in FFPC best balls right now. Uh, we're talking about redraft best ball. I would take QT for sure all day long. I like QT as well. I would draft him before Will Fuller. And I'm guessing he's going way after. He's not going way after, but Will Fuller is going at the 8-11 in best ball. I mean, granted, I mean, he, this, this is the format for Will Fuller, his best ball. Um, Kiki QT going at the uh, oh, I just I think at the eleven eleven. Right. Yeah, no eleven oh one. So basically, what is that? About two and a half rounds, two rounds sure. a- after Will Fuller. Um, I don't know QT too. You know, both these guys have battled injury issues over the year, and and technically, when when I've seen that in the past, I tend to go with the guy who is costing me less. I've never been a big Will Fuller guy. And is that because Ron Meyer likes to send me trade offers involving his Will Fuller sending him my way once yeah, every month? Bit, I think bit. that has turned me off to him a little bit. <laughs> it's part of the reason why I don't like Sterling Shepard all that much either, because I've gotten plenty of trade offers uh, for him going That's my funny. way. So if Ron Meyer is selling, I'm not buying. It's, it, has nothing, it, I, it has nothing to do with that. I think it has everything it has to do with that to me. No, but I, I think subconsciously I don't like these players because I don't like the deals I'm seeing them in. In, in offers with two Packer. Do you know, does that make sense to you? Kern Reeve, Ivy League professor, does that make sense to you that, that when over and over again I see these players in bad deals and I just immediately, I'm just like, I don't like He's not a guys. professor anymore. He's just an administrator. Well, whatever. He, 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 okay. he doesn't even teach anymore. Right, so he's, so he's been promoted. So <laughs> he's higher than a professor. <laughs> so, so, so that's my point uh, on that. Um, QT... How many double-digit catches, or how many games with double-digit catches did he have last year? Like two or three? He had yeah, one in the playoffs, he did, didn't he? Yeah, very few games, but all of a sudden he'll pop up like a 10 for 110 or something, or 10 for 120. Or Perfect for basketball. Yeah, huge for, for PPR leagues. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'd rather QT uh, than Will Fuller. I actually own QT in a couple of dynasty leagues as well. So standing pat there, and uh, hopefully you stood pat for this entire show tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to do it for the uh, Easter edition 
of the uh, High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour. Do you have something to say? Uh, you know, happy Passover to all our Jewish listeners. No, I just want to say happy Good Friday. And I also want to give you a little credit to a uh, – he's not really a friend of the show. And he's actually okay. a competitor in the industry. Oh, now. yeah. Uh, at Scott Fantasy got retweeted by at, by at Real Donald Trump tonight. Yeah. Today. And that was actually kind of pretty, pretty insane. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. The, the, so, we know somebody that the president retweeted. And it had the word circle jerk in the, in the tweet. Yeah. So, it's been pretty entertaining in the fantasy. What a world we live in. What a <laughs> time to be alive. So, hey, you know, props to you, Scott. Good to see you, buddy. That was pretty funny. And uh, <laughs> in case you're not on Twitter, uh, you can check out the Daily Mail online. They did a story about it. Uh, there's, there's plenty of stuff out there on it's it. It's been pretty fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, give a shout out. Uh, really, really crazy stuff. Uh, good for you, Scott. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable, man. It's unbelievable. I want to thank Matt Ryan, uh, Dave Gerzak, the FFPC, Rob uh, Bryce, and, of course, each and every one of you for listening. Special programming note, we will not be on the air next Friday because the NFL draft. We're going to be doing our show on Wednesday. 10-9 Central, Wednesday night, 2018 FFPC Bare Knuckle Champion and Rotoviz lead writer, Monty Fan will be our guest. That will be a lot of fun. So we'll talk to him on Wednesday, 10-9 Central. Check out those Maiden Dynasties and 2019 FFPC Best Balls, myffpc.com. Get in on the football guys in the main event early bird. They'll be up before you know it. And, of course, your Easter weekend starts now. This has been another episode of the High Stakes Fantasy Football Hour presented by myffpc.com that was broadcast live and heard around the world. Eric and Dave will be back next week with more analysis, interviews, and advice from a guest much smarter than they are. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you again next week. We're on the same floor, even more so if we on tour. Me and E explore the country, wondering about the evening before. Trying to explain where the time went. Well, other rappers find a studio to grind in. Uh, one of the things that uh, Kern Reeve wanted me to mention in the uh, the Marvel post credit scene of the show, as, as it were, um, Genesis and Revelations popping off live on these airwaves in two weeks. Yes, great. Um, so we're going to be doing that. Now, I was told that there we was... We also have to ask Kern Reeve about metabolism. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't, that's, it's too late in the evening to get involved in that, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. We've got to figure out how to type in this GD chat room first. Um is there a third league this year that we're covering? Apocalypse. Still Apocalypse. not filled. Still not filled. Now, if it does fill, are we covering that? Are we going three hours that night? Or what are we doing then? Afternoon. All Apocalypse right. can tip off for now. Okay, so Apocalypse, if you want to be um, on these airways, you got to do it. Uh, by the way, I might. I was totally psyched up to see uh, Endgame next week. I'm like, this is going to be the one I, I go to the theater to see because i, I got to find out what happens. I'm not going to go see Endgame at 1 in the morning after the first round of the NFL draft. Oh, you, why do you want to see it like opening night? Well, because I don't want to be spoiled, you know, and everybody's going to be talking about it. Hey, tell you, let me tell you, they're going to come back to life. It'll be okay. I don't know if all of them will. We'll see. And then Friday night, same thing. I want to watch the draft. Saturday, um, the draft will probably be over with at, what, 5 or 6 o'clock that night? Yeah, that's 5, yeah. And, and so that, then that's my plan. I don't know if I can get a ticket then, so I might see the Sunday matinee. Why don't you just buy, the, buy it now? You can buy a pre-tip pure by ticket. I, I guess my whole thing is I don't know how drained I'm going to be from the NFL draft. Like, if I'm feeling... Like Plus, rounds four, five, six, or seven, you're not going to be too right, great. So now maybe so I'll, buy be, you know, I'll buy a ticket. You'll be like taking a crap or hanging out with your chip, whatever. You don't do anything. To it. Oh, right, pick 184. Who gives That's a, a good shit? point. That's a good point. Yeah. All right. Wise words from the Dizzle. So glad to have you back. We'll talk to you on Wednesday at 10, 9 Central. Thanks right, for listening, baby. everybody. <laughs> Rough life.